X-Men 1992 animated series, season 1, episode 10. This episode is called Come the Apocalypse Thoughts. So, spoilers for these first 10 episodes. Another episode I love. Let's dive right in. So, yeah. Um, at the start and end of this episode, Angel really expresses self-loathing, which is unfortunate, something a number of minority individuals do deal with. Let's see, and I appreciate Xavier pointing out, you know, the the you know the reason that the mutants hoping for the cure, you know, some of them get very angry, and so you know he points out it's their frustration. Really explains it well, and Angel Mystique is Angel, and. Cyclops have a verbal confrontation that almost turns physical. Look me in the eye and say that. Gladly. <laughs> and let's see. Yeah, and we see that, you know, Angel has become Archangel. And true to form, you can't do mad science without some bad weather. And yeah, as. Apocalypse explains his his plans. He talks about you know he he will be the purifier, which you know, yeah. Um, if the kids don't know it before watching this episode, very good to to put to to point out to them that's a bad thing. If someone comes along and says they're going to purify the world, bad thing. And, yeah, we, you know, not only do we see the four horsemen, but they also, you know, they're identified as such. And later in the episode, straight up, we get the title drop, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, you know, of, of apocalypse. So it's great. Which is, of course, you know, like the moment, the moment you have a supervillain called apocalypse, you gotta give him four horsemen. It's just, it's, I'm pretty sure it's the law. People have gone to prison for not doing it. And, uh, yeah, Gambit antagonizes pretty much every single one of the other ex- Like, n other than Wolverine, like, every every female X-Men that isn't Jubilee, you know. And, it's, yeah. <laughs> Storm makes jokes now. What, what happened? <laughs> Let's see... And, yeah, Apocalypse introduces himself to the world. Apocalypse, so named for the blue lipstick. If you know, you know. And the... Um, let's see... Yeah, really love seeing the four horsemen in action. Just, yeah, really, really cool. You know, they spread a lot of, of chaos. Uh, you know, um, let's see, Pestilence slash plague, you know, making people sick, and I like, because it's a kid's show, you know, when, when the bridge is destroyed and the tank falls in, they, just, they make sure to show, no, 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 the people inside the tank were, you know, they, they made it out. I don't know how they made it out from the tank falling over like that, but, you know, I mean, <laughs> you don't want the kids picturing someone drowning inside a tank, I get that. Let's see. And, you know, Xavier points out Apocalypse is someone that has to be stopped. He can't be reasoned with, like, some of the others that they've faced. And, yeah, you know, this is the biggest threat we've seen so far on the show, which does make it a little surprising that it's not, like, the finale, but then, let's see, the... Yeah, after this, there's a two-parter and then a one-off finale thing that I won't give away what happens there, but yeah, you know, it, it, this does feel like it would make a really solid finale, uh, but but yeah, um, love seeing Mystique, you know, Mystique's got a gun, it's like she is want to in the comics, and at least sometimes in the movies also. And I appreciate, like, we understand why, you know, with how big a threat Apocalypse is, you know, you might wonder, well, why doesn't, why didn't he do this a long time ago? Well, he needed the machine. Uh, you know, Mystique found the machine for him. 
and the, yeah you know the machine was only recently developed and let's see yeah very intense when apocalypse fights rogue it was very cool and rogue stops archangel and apocalypse does end up escaping and you know archangel basically blames himself which you know you know basically the log you know if if you just look at well i mean he was you know he was literally like mind controlled you know but if he hadn't been so interested in the cure then they wouldn't you know apocalypse wouldn't have been able to you know so so that's you know that's why he blames himself not that that's it's still not you know he shouldn't be blaming himself but again you know good I feel like most kids probably took away, you know, he shouldn't be blaming himself, but I guess it's because, you know, the a, a lot of minority individuals are way too hard on themselves, and it's because there's so much hostility and criticism of them that's completely, you know, it's, it's, it's not, a, it's not um, proportional at all. You know, if you it, like, it's, I'm not saying that nobody should be hard on themselves. I think, you know, rich people should probably be much more self-critical, be much more empathetic towards others. I think that might be about what I have to say for this one. Let's see. Was there any other action that? I appreciate that, you know, it, like when the heroes and villains clashed, you know, the the reason that the the good guys won, you know, you could understand, like they actually they were very tactical when they went after them, and like if not for Rogue, they you know the X Men might not have won. The you know they really managed to sell the the threat. Of Apocalypse and his four horsemen. None, <clears throat> none of the horsemen feel like they're just lost in the background, which I quite appreciate. And yeah, it was, you know, I, I appreciate bringing back, uh, I think her name is Pestilence, the Morlock. You know, of course she would want the cure. And yeah. Let's see. Mm. I really appreciate that we know that Apocalypse is still out there. Like, it doesn't seem like, oh, he was defeated. I guess that's it, you know. Let's see. I think that might be everything that I had for this one. So, yeah, um, excellent episode. And, yeah, make my Marvel.